Is this legal? We're forming a pi bond, so we do have to be careful. But it's not a problem because we're forming the pi bond with a carbocation. Carbocations always have room for extra electrons, so this is fine. This is a good arrow. Let's try a different arrow. Is this arrow legal? This is pretty much the same deal as the previous arrow. We have to be careful because we are forming a new pi bond, but the atom that's gaining the pi bond is a carbocation. Those always have room for extra electrons. So this is also legal. That's a good error. Let's try another error. Is this legal? Now we're forming a pi bond, and we're not doing it with a carbocation. And this atom that's gaining the pi bond isn't losing any pi bonds. So this is a bad arrow. This is an illegal arrow. This arrow is illegal if we leave it by itself. This arrow is illegal because we're, um, this atom here is forming a new pi bond, um, but it doesn't have room for a new pi bond because it's not a carbocation. How can we make some room? Well, we can make some room by moving this pi bond away. And a good way to do that would be like this. We already saw earlier that this was legal. It's perfectly fine to put a new pi bond here because now the carbon that's gaining the pi bond is a carbocation. It has room. Uh, so this would be um, now a legal set of arrows. Are these arrows valid? I hope you gave that a shot. Let's start over here. Um, now this head indicates that we are forming a pi bond. That's when we have to be careful. We have to be careful when we're forming a pi bond. We don't need to worry about exceeding an octet when we form a lone pair, but when we're forming a pi bond, we have to be careful. Okay, well, are we forming a pi bond with a carbocation here? No. Um, so, the only way we can form this pi bond is if this atom is also losing a pi bond. The only way that this atom could possibly have room for a new pi bond is if it's also losing a pi bond. But you can see that this oxygen is not losing a pi bond. So this arrow is illegal. It's not allowed. We're not allowed to put in this error. Now, you might have thought that we were going to be okay because you might have thought, oh, we're making room for this pi bond by moving this lone pair. Uh, but if you've been paying attention, um, you might have noticed that we've said the only way to make room for a new pi bond um, is for the atom to lose a pi bond. We never said that an atom could get more room by losing a lone pair. It turns out that that just doesn't work. Losing a lone pair does not actually make more room for a new pi bond. We've kind of already seen why that is, because remember, this oxygen is still going to be sharing this lone pair in this bond. And remember that for purposes of thinking about the octet rule, um, a pair that is shared counts just as much as a pair that's owned. So even though this oxygen is putting this lone pair into a bond, for purposes of the octet rule, it's still going to um, possess these two electrons. So we haven't really made room here. Um, I hope that was clear. Um, you might want to actually draw a picture to convince yourself um, that if we form a pi bond here and a pi bond here, the oxygen would definitely have violated the octet rule. Um, but anyway, um, for purposes of quickness and efficiency, maybe we can just memorize. The only way to make room for a new pi bond is for an atom to lose one of its old pi bonds. It doesn't work for an atom to lose a lone pair. That does not make enough room for a new pi bond. Losing a lone pair does not make enough room for a new pi bond. Only losing a pi bond makes room for a new pi bond. So this was illegal. I think I might have mentioned this earlier. Um, at first it looks like this oxygen is a candidate for resonance because it's got a lone pair and it's next to another candidate for resonance. But it actually turns out that there are no resonance structures that involve this oxygen. It actually turns out that even though it seems like this is a candidate for resonance, possibly, it doesn't turn out that there's any resonance structures that we can draw here without exceeding the octet rule. And now we can see why. We can't move this lone pair off of the oxygen um, unless we can make some new room on this oxygen. And the only way to make more room is to move a pi bond. And this oxygen doesn't have any pi bonds. So there's no resonance structures, no resonance forms that involve moving electrons off of this oxygen. How about if we erase this error? These 
arrows work now. Well, here we're forming a pi bond. That's when we have to be careful. Um, this is not a carbocation, but that's okay because we're making room for the new pi bond by losing this pi bond. So this is um, the exact situation when it's okay to form a pi bond. It's okay for this carbon to form a new pi bond here because it's losing a pi bond here. And do we have to worry about this arrow exceeding an octet? No, because it's forming a lone pair. Lone pairs don't exceed octets. Only forming pi bonds is when we have to be careful about exceeding an octet. So these arrows are okay. Is this legal? Now this arrow is forming a pi bond. That's when we have to be careful about exceeding an octet. Um, now this is not a carbocation, so it does not have room. Remember that we're not saying that anything that's a cation has room for a new pi bond. Only carbocations have room for a new pi bond. You can see that this nitrogen already has a full octet. Uh, but even if you hadn't checked that, we've just already learned that only carbon cations have room for uh, new electrons. Any other type of nonmetal um, carbocation is not going to have room for new electrons. Um, and we haven't made any room here by moving any pi bonds. So, so far, this is illegal. This is not allowed. How can we make some room? How about this? Can we do that? That's totally bad. That's bad in so many different ways. Uh, for one thing, we haven't moved the pi bond off the nitrogen. Remember, our whole goal all along here is to move this pi bond off the nitrogen to make room for this pi bond. So this, this is wrong. And there's no way any hydrogen can ever participate in resonance. I haven't said that, uh, but I hope it's been apparent to you, hydrogens never participate in resonance. Hydrogens never participate in resonance. So this, this arrow is bad on so many levels. So let's, let, let's get rid of it. We, uh, less said about that, the better. Okay. Um, well, how about this? Would this be a good way to make room on this nitrogen for this new pi bond coming in? Yeah, that's totally fine, because now we're forming a new lone pair. That's okay. We don't need to worry about exceeding, exceeding octet when we form a lone pair. So now, we're forming a new pi bond here, but there's going to be room on the nitrogen because the nitrogen is also losing this pi bond. It's okay to form a new pi bond as long as it's with, a nit as long as it's with an atom that's also losing the pi bond. So this would be... Uh, a valid resonance electron pushing situation. Is this legal? We're forming a pi bond, but there's no worries because we're forming it with a carbocation. So this is okay. This is a good error. How about this? Is this legal? Now again, we're forming a pi bond. Now this is not a carbocation down here. So the only way that this atom could gain a new pi bond is if it also lost a pi bond. But this carbon doesn't have any pi bonds to lose. So there's no way that we, that we could legally put a new pi bond on this carbon. So there's no way this could be a legal arrow. That should be obvious because this also is just not a candidate for resonance in the first place based on what we saw earlier in the videos. So for a couple of different reasons, this arrow could not possibly work. This is a wrong arrow. this arrow work? This arrow doesn't work for the same reason as the previous one, pretty much. We're forming a new pi bond, but this is not a carbocation. The only way that we could make room on this atom for a new pi bond is if it lost a pi bond. But this carbon doesn't have any pi bonds to lose, so there's no way that this could be involved um, in uh, forming a new pi bond. And in addition to that, again, it, it just wasn't a candidate for resonance in the first place. So this arrow is bad. Is this a good arrow? Well, in this case, we're not forming a new pi bond, so we don't need to worry about exceeding an octet. Here, we're forming a lone pair. When we form a lone pair, we don't need to worry about exceeding an octet. We know this is forming a lone pair because the head is pointing directly at the carbon, not to the bond. All right, so we don't need to worry about exceeding an octet. Uh, however, this is still wrong. This was a little bit of a trap. I just wanted to make sure that you're awake by throwing in a slightly different issue. So we've been mostly focusing on not exceeding the octet rule. But this is a bad arrow for a different reason. Um, notice here that we're taking a lone pair here and making it into a lone pair over here. 
Well, we said a long time ago that there's never a good reason to do that when you're drawing resonance structures. You never want to take a lone pair in one place and make it into a lone pair someplace else. Uh, so this is a unhelpful, bad arrow, um, not because it exceeds an octet, but for, uh, for the reason that it's this type of lone pair to lone pair transition. It turns out that that is never a useful type of arrow to draw in, uh, in when you're doing uh, resonance structures. All right, so to repeat, um, this does not exceed an octet. It can't possibly exceed an octet because we're not forming a pi bond. But this is a bad arrow for a different reason. This is a bad arrow because we're taking a lone pair and moving it into a lone pair on another atom. We've already discussed that that's a type of transition that we don't make in resonance. We don't go from a lone pair in one place to a lone pair someplace else. So this would be bad. Bad. 